Hello amigos, come on welcome back to the very first episode of Flora's Watch 2022-23. Uh, the new season's almost uh, upon us, and um, yeah, we've got lots to catch up on. So obviously Flores was involved with um, Mexico over the summer. Um, didn't play all that often, but he still got a little bit of game time, and obviously he was with, in and around the national team again, called up again, so that's all good. Um, and now he's finally back at Arsenal. Um, Arsenal played a pre-season game against Ipswich a few days ago now, but um, it was quite actually funny actually because Ipswich is the town or well, the club that um, that we signed him from. Not just him, we signed Tatiana and Silvana as well, all at the same time, back in 2019, 2018? I can't remember, 2018, I think. 2019. Might be 2019. Um, ages ago, anyway. Um, Silvana and Tatiana have obviously moved on. Tatiana's still at Chelsea and she's doing really well, so that's cool. Um, yeah, so they played, he actually played, I think, the entire second half um, of that game. Obviously, I think Arsenal won 4 1, I think it was. Um, didn't get any goals. He got, I think, he got a pre assist. Um, but, um, yeah, it was really good, actually. I mean, it doesn't count as his first team debut because obviously it's a friendly. And there's a, a few other U23 players involved as well. Um, some are blatantly going to go out on loan. Um, like Aziz, I think this, I think Aziz is going to get sold. Um, it's hard to keep up with the other of threes uh, at the moment, to be honest with you. There's a lot of change going on. Um, but he seems to be a player that Arsenal want to keep at least until January. Um, all the talk from George Bird and Charles Watts, who are very knowledgeable in that area, um, they've, they've both come out and said that he's likely going to stay at Arsenal until um, the January transfer window and then gets uh, put out on loan. Um, and that's not even going to be with the U23s. I think he's going to be moved out of the U23s into the first team. He's just going to be in and around the first team now. Um, he's going to get plenty of opportunities to get games. Probably not the league, maybe. I'm thinking more the early stages of the Carabao Cup and the Europa League group stages. Um, stages, I say. Um, historically, in the Europa League, we've played very, very young squads in the um in the group stages, because normally we don't get that much tougher uh, opposition, and then we get onto the first team in, in the knockout stages, because obviously that's the the main part of that tournament. So he's gonna get chances, and the early um, early stages of the FA Cup as well. We've got loads of cup competitions now, um, plus we're in the Europa League as well. So it's not like last season where we had quite a few, quite a lot less. Um, fixtures than we had uh, this season uh, coming. So, yeah, he's going to get plenty of opportunities. Um, and, it, hell, if he does well in a couple of Europa League games, I, mean, I think that's how we brought Smith Rowe in, if I remember rightly. I mean, we brought Smith Rowe and Saka into the first team when the first team wasn't playing well. Um, they were literally like our last-ditch resort, and it just worked out that they were just brilliant players. Um, we are a little bit better off this season, um, we still need to bring more signings in. Um, I'll talk about that in another video, by the way. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I mean, what can I say? I mean, he's doing really well. I mean, he's in the Mexican national team now. He's in the fold. He's he's in the conversation for Qatar as well, which is, to be honest with you, I, I mean, I've, up until now, well, up until a couple of weeks ago, I was like, nah, realistically, he's not going to go to Qatar. We all want him to go there, of course, but it just doesn't look likely at all. And at the moment, I'm still kind of on the fence about it. I'm still not going to start thinking, oh, yes, he's going to he's gonna come to uh, he's gonna go to Qatar. He's going to be in the World Cup because he's still 18 years old. He's still technically not played for the Arsenal first team yet. He's not an Arsenal first team player yet. But everything changes soon. So right now, um, Arsenal are going to basically just start in their pre-season. Um, they've, they've got a couple of games in the US, they've got a couple of games in Germany, I think it is, um, in the next, like, the rest of this month, I believe, and then the season starts at the very beginning of August, so um, because obviously Qatar's and pushed everything up a bit. Um, so for me, I I'm I'm ninety nine percent sure he's gonna to go to the US. I'm pretty sure he's gonna feature in all of Arsenal's preseason. Um 
which tells me that Arteta is seriously considering playing him in those cup games, in those Europa League group stage games. Um, it's, you know, he's not a completely unknown to Arteta as well. Arteta's seen him train and trained with him multiple times. There's a picture, I think, I think there was a picture out of him talking to Arteta um, a couple of weeks ago um, in training. Because he's been training with the first team since pretty much he got back from Mexico or with Mexico. So um, Arteta knows him already. It's not like he's been an, he's, you know, he's in the pool of under twenty three players and Arteta just picked this one guy out. He's he's he knows him. They know each other and obviously Flores has come out in an interview a couple of interviews and spoken very highly of Arteta, so they know each other, which is good. Um they have a foundation to move up on. So yeah, for me he's part of Arsenal's total pre season and if that happens then absolutely. I mean the the two guys that I spoke about earlier, uh, George Bird and Charles Watts, they both said that he's likely, he's one of the players, I think uh, Amari Hutchinson as well, uh, they're likely to be in Arsenal until the January. We use them for the group stages in the early games, blah, blah, blah. And then um, put him out of loan for the rest of the season. Um, unless unless he, he makes a real impact in... Arteta's like, nah, we need to keep him in the first team. And he becomes an Arsenal first team player like Saka did. Um, he's, Flores has mentioned that Saka is his role model. Um, and I think he could go the Saka route. There's the Saka route and the Smith Rowe route. The Saka route is straight into the first team and that's it. Saka was never put on loan or anything. Whereas Smith Rowe went out on loan, had a really successful loan spell as well at Huddersfield, if I'm not mistaken, and came back and then got in. So there's two valid ways of getting into the team. Um, it's just Saka's a little bit better because obviously it's straight from the youth team into the first team and, the, you know, he's now one of our first team, first team players. So uh, first team, first player on the team sheet is what I'm trying to say. Um, and I think Flores could go in that route, especially now that he's in a full international. I mean, that's, that's crazy. It's crazy to think that, you know, an 18-year-old in your under-23s in your system, in your youth system for the last four, three, four years, is, is an international. Um, and for Mexico as well, you know, um, all, due to, all due respect to, you know, all the other teams, all the other countries, um, Mexico is a good footballing country. Going a bit, go through a bit of a rough spot at the moment, but they're a good, respected international team. And that's not to be taken lightly. And to be involved in the Mexican national team at the age of 18 is special. And I think that's going to push Arteta to think, okay, this kid's obviously got something. He knows that already, but like he's got something to put him in, into the Mexican national team. He's got enough to put, us, put him into the first team at Arsenal. So, and that's what Arsenal is all about. That's what Edu is all about. That's what Arteta is all about. It's about bringing players through the youth system. We're not going to just sell some. I mean, there's players like Daniel Ballard who's been sold to Sunderland, and he's going to have a really good career there. But, um, we want to supply our own team. We want to have a core team of hair lenders. And we're building on that, you know. Um, at, at the moment, Aketi is uh, our number 14. Saka's our number 8. Smith is our number 10. That's the core of our team. Um, Saliba, I think, can still qualify as a, a homegrown player. Um, so, you know, that's the core of our team. So it's pretty good. So, yeah, I'm mumbling too much. So basically, he's going to be part of the preseason. I know that. Um, and once that happens, I think he's going to stay for the first six months of the season. And, um, yeah, I mean, if the best case scenario is he plays in the Europa League group stage game, absolutely blinds out, and then Arteta's like, oh, let's try him in the Premier League game, blinds out in the Premier League game, and then basically he becomes... Uh, a Premier League first team established player for Arsenal Football Club before the World Cup. And I think that's crucial because I'm not entirely sure when the Mexico when Mexico releases their World Cup squad. But I'm imagining it's probably going to be late September, mid-October time. That's plenty of time. Plenty of time for Flores to really show that he's got it. And then, you know... Mexico, Tata Martino cannot look turn down a Premier League 
player, first team player, and a player for Arsenal, no less. Um, you know, clubs, you know, other other fans are going to banter all they want, but Arsenal is a big club, one of the biggest clubs in the Premier League. Um, always has been, always will be. And if you're a first team player at Arsenal, your national team has to be looking at you seriously. And I think I, t- I if he's playing a, a few Premier League games or is it is at least on the bench coming off the bench into Premier League games often and he's playing Europa League games, absolutely no way in hell can Tata Martino go, Yeah, no, I'm not taking him. He's gotta take him. He will f- basically force his hand. Um so it's an interesting couple of months coming up, really, guys. Um, I think by the end of October, uh, maybe by the uh, maybe by the end of September, we'll probably we'll definitely know either way what's going to happen. Uh, again, I don't know when the lists for the squads are going to get announced. Maybe before the end of September. Um, I've got a feeling it's going to be in October time. But um, yeah, all all good so far. Um, like I said, you need to have a really good preseason. Um, even if he goes out and loan, if he goes out and loan in August, it depends. For me, it depends on the team. It depends on the league. If he goes to a, a team in one of the five big European leagues and gets into their first team and plays their first team game, equally it could uh, force Stata to choose him. But from what I've heard, from what I've read, from at least a couple of different guys, they said it looks like he's going to be staying at the club and that we'll be using him with the group stages of the Europa League and the first few games of the Carabao Cup and maybe the first couple of games of the FA Cup as well. And he's going to be a squad player, at least at the beginning. And Flores has the opportunity and the ability to impress um, and if he presses Arteta, Arteta is going to play him. It's as simple as that. Um, yeah, and that's part of why I'm happy that Russell haven't really signed Rafinha. I think it would have added another player that Flores has to compete with. I don't think Wiggins are priority anyway. That's another story for another video. Anyway, guys, so yeah, really good, really happy at the moment. It's getting first team action with Mexico national team, and he is. I think, on the absolute verge of becoming a first-team player for Arsenal. Uh, just to let you guys know, obviously Mexico has a couple of um, um, friendlies coming up. Well, they've got three now in September. Uh, the first of September, which we already knew about. There's two more on the 24th uh, in US time, 24th and 27th. Um, I'm going to be at the 24th. Um, at the Rose Bowl against Peru. I'm going to go there. I'm in the US anyway at the time. So I'm going to be there. I'm praying that Flores is not only there. But um, plays it. I mean. Um, I'm watching the Mexican national team live anyway. It's been a dream of mine since 2014. Um, uh, anyway. But getting the chance to watch Marcelo Flores play live for the first time. Is going to be wonderful. Like There's no... There's no word to describe it. Um, so, yeah, I'll let you know, obviously, if I am going to go there. And if he does play, it will be a very, very special episode of Flores Watch that I'll do after that game. Um, but, yeah, um, yeah, take these guys. And I'll see you guys very soon. Obviously, there's some preseason games coming up. So, if, if he features in those games, if he plays for those games, then I'll do some Flores Watch videos. And, obviously, if he scores and assists, I'm definitely going to do videos for that. So, keep an eye. It's, this is going to be a busy month for him, I think. He's going to play a, a fair few games um, in the US and Europe as well. So, we have to wait and see what's going to happen. So, yeah, take it easy, guys. Uh, welcome to the new season. And, hopefully, it's going to be a big season for him. And, um, yeah, take it easy and stay strapped in because it's going to be a wild ride, I think. Um, yeah, take it easy, guys. And, uh, I'll see you guys soon. Adios.